in a few words, what we uh, have developed is a, a new way to see, to, to conceptualize the disease. Uh, now the disease is conceptualized as a chain of events, uh, starting from amyloid, going on to tau, then to neurodegeneration, and then to symptoms. It's a deterministic chain of events. You start with amyloid, you end up with clinical symptoms. Uh, it's very simple, very easy to understand. Problem is, it doesn't fit the data. Because what, uh, what the data suggests is that in, in uh, uh, autosomal dominant Alzheimer's disease, this is the case. This chain of events fits autosomal dominant, but 99.9 something percent of cases are not autosomal dominant. They're sporadic. And in sporadic Alzheimer's disease, was, what happens is that you have amyloid, sometimes you have tau, sometimes you have neurodegeneration, sometimes you have symptoms. So in the end, it's a probabilistic chain of events. It's not deterministic. And this is going to, this, uh, this has a number of implications in terms of diagnosis, in terms of prevention, in terms of uh, drug development, in terms of research. Uh, it changes the way we see the disease. It's a sort of a, uh, uh, a, a, a relativistic theory of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, when, when the theory of relativity was developed, there was not an immediate impact on, uh, on daily life. On, on the way uh, men looked at the world. But the impact that was, uh, could be felt in the, in the following decades, following the impact on, uh, say on technological and scientific thinking that followed the theory of relativity. So uh, with, with all due changes, okay, with all due respect with, uh, for the theory of relativity, but we believe this is a sort of a, a change of a perspective, change, change of attitude, uh, change of thinking, a way of thinking to the disease that is akin to the theory, is, is a sort of a theory of relativity uh, for Alzheimer's disease.